everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Artisan Power here, and in today's fun video, I'm going to give you some of my scroll style essentials and tidbits, things that you need when scrolling. From my years of experience, as you guys know, I started scrolling when I was 14 years of age under my grandfather's tutelage, and then I have just progressed and learned my own skills, tips, and techniques, and I want to share those to you in this video. There's going to be no project cut out, so if you guys want to see one of those videos, I have a whole playlist of those down in the video section. Just go check my page and also subscribe if you're new here. I'd really appreciate that. But these are the two scroll saws I have right here. When I very first started this YouTube channel and doing the scroll saw woodworking primarily, I was on this 16 inch Delta variable speed scroll saw. It was one my grandfather got me and it's given me years and years of service and it's still running great. And then I upgraded to the 20 inch Delta um, variable speed scroll saw and this thing is a dream and I love it. Um, if you're very first getting into scroll saw and don't want to do the investment of a huge investment of a new tool, go to a pawn shop or something and check it out. Um, they sometimes have scroll saws. I have seen this exact 16 inch scroll saw which I started the channel on in pawn shops for between $60 and $80. Sometimes it's missing the blade clamps but you can modify stuff for that like I modified for this blade clamp. So you might want a use tool or if not the new issue of scroll saw woodworking and crafts has the best budget scroll saw for a best bang for your buck and they have selected and have a nice article on the wind scroll saw and it will take both pin and pinless blades you guys know primarily I use pinless blades so I can do some of the finer detail that's in scroll saw and fret work one of my essential things to get is good source material to read I'm always picking up tips and tricks from other people that submitted stuff. I have joined a whole lot of scroll saw Facebook groups and made friends with a lot of people in the scroll saw community. That is one of the best um, essential things for scroll saw that I can tell you. Talk to other people that scroll. You can always message me over on Instagram and I'll be happy to tell you anything I know about scrolling. But really, really awesome. This is the new issue and it has that article in it if you are interested. Do not be intimidated by these tools. They are great tools. I have seen a lot of women recently pick up the scroll saw and that is awesome showing that females can do the same thing males can do and I love that. Um, I know a bunch of great scrollers that are female and male but let me move the camera right now a little closer to the 20 inch scroll saw and I'll show you guys some of my essential tools, tricks and tidbits. Over here at my scroll saw the first thing I would recommend getting is something comfortable to sit in. That is on my preference. I am six foot two and I prefer to sit down when I scroll. I stood up for years scrolling and I finally tried sitting down and it was a dream to just sit here and work and just zone out in my world of sawdust. What I use is just this Craftsman adjustable um, shop stool. It's kind of like a bar stool with a back with adjustable height. It's very comfortable for long sessions of scrolling. If you plan to sit down and scroll for long periods of time. Another thing I would highly recommend is tape and spray adhesive. I get asked time and time again how I attach all my patterns on my YouTube videos and I always use clear packing tape. It lubricates the blade, the oils that are in the tape and it prevents burn marks on thicker and harder and also denser woods. I love using clear packing tape. I'll sometimes use masking tape to kind of just temporarily line up the pattern on the wood when I'm cutting it out the rough sizes over on the bandsaw. A lot of people will use spray adhesive. I'm not a fan of spray adhesive because sometimes it can get messy and then it sticks to everything. My fingertips get sticky but a lot of people use this to attach their pattern and use that for scrolling. I did for years and years until I switched to the clear packing tape and now this is primarily what I use. If I do have an intensive fretwork project with hundreds upon hundreds of internal cuts I will go back to spray adhesive and all you have to do to remove the pattern then is just put some odorless mineral spirits on it dab it on let it soak in and it will just peel off like an old sticker but really really cool if you would like that another thing I would suggest if you were scrolling for a long period of time is to put your scroll saw on an angle I'm gonna move the camera once again to show you the angle with which my scroll saw is on so let me show that to you now. This is the angle you guys are more familiar seeing me over here on the scroll saw at. 
as you can see my scroll saw is on an advanced angle that way when I'm sitting here scrolling I'm not hunched over and kind of putting wear and tear on my neck and upper back bending over I can go up with more of an angle I've seen people put them at severe angles I've seen people leave them flat that again that is your preference but for me it's so comfortable to sit here and then down here between my legs on the stool I have a bucket and with the angle of everything, usually when I cut something out and the waste wood falls, it'll slide down the table and drop right into the waste bucket. And then I can just dump that bucket into the stove later on to use in the wood stove. That's how I use it. I love the Delta scroll saw because it has something that the DeWalt, which is the brother or sister of this scroll saw, and also $100 more, this scroll saw has locking upper arm for threading the blade through internal cuts that is very good I know the DeWalt does not have that you have to buy aftermarket pieces for it but I really love that very quick to do blade changes and all another thing I would say is an essential tool is a file when you install the blade the back side of it usually has burrs and small pieces of metal on it that are micro and are naked to the human eye but if you was under a microscope you could see it so what I like to do is file the back side of the blade to get it nice and smooth it also helps you make tighter turns without too much grabbing but really cool I have this on a little magnet strip down here below the scroll saw I use that on the 16 inch scroll saw over here as well but really really cool next essential tool I would say is a foot switch I have a foot switch ran under the table and it's connected right here where my left foot can hit it and as you can see hands-free I can turn it on and off I picked this up at Harbor Freight for I think 12 13 bucks and this was back when they had the 20% off coupon so I got it for around ten dollars eight dollars something like that but really really awesome you can turn it on turn it off just put your foot down the saw runs release it it turns off and that's great, especially if you're a north scroller, to keep both hands on the material instead of coming up here and turning it on and off all the time. This was something when I bought it, I wish I had it years and years ago, back when I was on the 16-inch scroll saw. But really, really cool. Next thing I would say was a recommended tool on my end is something with a point on it. You've seen me use my X-Acto knife. And also this little thing with the orange handle, I'm sure everyone has seen me use over here on the scroll saw. And that is what you'll see me sometimes holding it while I'm scrolling. If I'm cutting out like a finer internal cut and it gets caught in the blade, I'm able to lift the piece up and poke it through and it'll slide on down the table. I again picked this up at Harbor Freight. It was in a four pack. There was a piece that had like a hook on it, a needle on the end for like threading stuff. It was in a four pack and I kept this one with the straight pin just for that purpose and I keep it right here beside me in a cup with used blades, pens and pencils, anything you might need. The X-Acto knife is also good for the same purpose. I used that for years until I found the little orange handle tool. The next thing I would say was a highly recommended tool is a good selection of scroll saw blades. I have a scroll saw blade caddy here that holds 10 varieties of blades. I do have the dreaded spiral blade in here as well that I hope to start using soon. But my standby scroll saw blades are these shark tooth scroll saw blades. I would highly recommend them. I use them all the time. They are fulfilled by the Winfield Collection, I believe, but I get them off of this magazine, Scroller, and they send me these out quarterly. You can get a free um, catalog in the mail. Go to their website and just request one and you'll be added to their mailing list. But I always get my shark tooth blades from this company and I highly recommend them. They come 12 to a pack like most um, scroll saw blade companies deliver and they come packaged it like this in the mail on a flat piece of thick sturdy cardboard and then a small ziplock bag and they are all labeled. I use the number five reverse tooth scroll saw blade and then with that I have these little tubes and the blade caddy I picked these up off of Amazon. They are great for storing blades. They've got like a little cork and then all your blades are just simply in them and I've got the label attached to them to where I can really see what's in them at a glance so really really cool these are six inch medical plastic test tubes you get ten to a pack with the corks on Amazon and I highly recommend those as well again blade selection is very good 
And also being comfortable. If you feel yourself getting fatigued at your scroll saw, just stop. Uh, I always know when to call it quits. I mean, there's days where I feel like I could come out here and scroll all day and scroll for 30 minutes and I feel myself getting fatigued just for whatever I've been through throughout that day and I'll just know it's time to stop. So that's also something good to keep in mind. And also, um, tunes. Tunes is something I highly recommend. When you're out in your workshop, that should be your happy place and your comfort zone. And I have an old classic iPod here that holds 40,000 songs that I can go to and listen to any playlist I want. I've also got an AM, FM radio right over here behind the tripod that you never see. But I've got all that wired up right here within hands reach. So if something comes on, I don't feel the vibe for it, I can change the song or whatever. But really, really cool and really, really awesome. And that is my essential list of scroll saw accessories and essentials. If you're new to scrolling or want to take up scrolling, I hope this video really helped you make the decision to jump into the world of scrolling and give you kind of a leg up. If you're a seasoned scroller, I hope this video also helped you. Maybe you picked up a tip or a tidbit along the way. If you didn't, I'm sorry. This is just my preferred list of essentials and tools that I use every time I sit over at the scroll saw. And I hope this helps someone out there that might not know as much as other scrollers know about scroll sawing. That's about all for this video, guys. Remember, guys, if I can make it or do it, so can you. I'm the Artisan Pirate. Take care, and I'll see you guys real soon.